Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how I mix up my fiber reactive dyes for my direct dyeing processes. I use them in a few different ways, always on silk. This recipe is just for silk. So these are the things you need. I'm going to mix up gold and yellow today. This is a fiber reactive dye Procyon from Dharma Trading. You can get these dyes from different companies. It doesn't matter whichever one you get them from but they have to be fiber reactive procyon dyes. They work in cold water, basically, or hot. They work either way. This process is not is going to be cold water. Then I have a couple of spoons, a tablespoon for my salt, and I personally use this half a teaspoon measure for my dyes. I always use this same spoon for my dyes so I know I can compare how much I'm using. I guess you could start with any measurement, but for this process, I'm going to use half a half teaspoon. Then I have a little jug to mix up salt water in. I have the salt, which should be iodine-free, so it's pickling salt. And I have another jug or bowl with some lukewarm water in it already. Um, I could go to the sink every time I mix a color and try to get the water lukewarm, but I find this easier. I just do the right temperature first. As long as it's not too hot. If it's too hot, it will um, deactivate the dye. It's not good for the powdered dye. So here we are. This is how we start. I'm just going to put get my salt water ready. I'm going to put, usually I, I put one full tablespoon in that cup. I kind of mixed up this, uh, worked on this process myself, this particular recipe. So many people might do this a different way, but this works for me. So this is a one cup measure, I think, and there's a one tablespoon of salt, and now I'm going to go put hot water in this to dissolve the salt. I'll be right okay, back. I have my, uh, I have my salt my water. I'm just mixing it around. This particular salt is flaked, so it takes a bit of dissolving. That'll take a couple minutes. So that's working. I just put my apron on. Usually, this is, can be quite messy, so um, always have some covering your clothes unless you wear something you don't mind getting dye on, basically. Um, I don't wear gloves for this process. I find gloves just make it more messy. Uh, you can get uh, dye on the gloves that you're not aware of, and you have to keep rinsing your gloves, and then your gloves are wet, and you don't really want to get this powder dye wet. So I just, I do it very carefully and quickly and I don't use gloves. And if I get some on my hands, I just rinse it right off with lukewarm, cool water. So powder dyes, let me tell you, powder dyes are not, they can be toxic if you use them over and over. You shouldn't be breathing the powder in. So if you're doing a lot of this, it would put a dust mask on. Um, how I do this is just very quickly, I just take that off. I don't fool with it too much. There's that beautiful golden yellow. Often the color of the powder looks a bit different from the actual end color. Your yellow is not going to be this orange color. Put that in there. I'm just using one spoon today and put the top right back on. Now I'm going to take my lukewarm water and just put enough in to make a, not exactly a paste, it's a bit more water than that. But it's just so you can mix it around and get the powder dissolved. And do take your time. Um, can't quite see this, but just dig in all the edges. I've been using this little glass bottle for a while. You could use whatever. Always use glass. Any glass container would do. But just don't put it back in your kitchen. <laughs> keep using it for dyes. I keep all these things separate. This is my kitchen cup, but the dyes don't really touch that, so that's okay. Okay, so I think that's dissolved. So now I'm going to take my squeeze bottle and pour, carefully pour that first amount in. And then sometimes when I look in, there's still some not dissolved. I'll add a little bit more water. Um, even if it is all dissolved, there's a little bit, you know, there's still some dye in the, in, the bottle, in this glass jar. So I'm just using a bit more water to rinse it out. I'm aiming today at having this about a third full. I haven't been doing a lot of dyeing lately because of COVID, so Normally I would fill it to the top, but so I only took one teaspoon of dye and I'm aiming at having the water fill it up to about there. So part of this water is just the lukewarm. So that got that far. 
And because I'm only using, when I do a full bottle of this, I would use this full measuring cup of salt water. Uh, but today I'm just going to put a third of it in. I use the same amount of salt that I would for the whole bottle. Rather than try to refigure that out, I'm just doing the whole thing and adding a third of it. So again, just to get all the rest of the dye out of here, I'm going to put it in here first. It's about a third, it might be half. I have to say a disclaimer here. <laughs> I'm not, as you can probably tell, I don't, I'm not someone, I'm like a cook who's been doing it for a while and just measures by look. But I do keep my same, I'm not super exact, but I just keep my same measurements and then I can sort of eyeball it. And it's not, that's going to be yellow no matter what you do. It'll either be a little paler or a little richer, but that's not, as long as I'm not putting so much water in there, it's it's washed out. There's no problem. So that's about a third. And with yellow, fortunately, you can see right through it. You can pretty much tell it's all dissolved. Sometimes you might have a problem, especially with reds, that some of the powder isn't dissolved. So with, the, with reds in particular, make sure you really uh, do that first stirring for a while and maybe even sit, let it sit for a while and then stir again before you start adding more water. So there we have it. This is a salt water solution um, and filled up. If that wasn't a third full yet, in fact, I might just, just to top it up, I'll just use the lukewarm water to where I want it. There. Got the top on. And this will be the most potent today, but I have used these, I've kept these stored in my cupboard for weeks and, and they still work. They probably are a little less intense when you dye things with them, but they'll last you for a few projects because it takes a long time to mix up dyes. If you want to use, say, six colors, you don't want to mix up six colors for just one project in one day. So I keep these aside. That is with only the salt in it. If you were using any other chemical in here, it may not last as long. But the salt doesn't really, um, some things start the dye process basically with the molecules and then they're finished. So within a few hours, it would be not usable, but the salt doesn't do that. So that's what I use, salt, dye, and water. I don't use any other chemicals for this particular process and only on silk. I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to dye some striped silk scarves. Just click on the link for the scarf dyeing video. Like and subscribe to keep up with more videos on how to dye silk. Thanks for watching.